In a prior video of mine, I found a lot of old discs that I spent a lot of time carrying upstairs, building RAID arrays off, and then installing the storage software. <coughs> huh? It's called Storage Jerry. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, what's this? I was wrong. The official name is pronounced Store J. You heard it here first, folks. Store J is the way to say it, and it's also the way to save money and reduce your data's carbon footprint. Hmm. You want me? That's weird. <laughs> As I was saying, I installed the Store J software onto the disks. The rationale was pretty simple. Following Store J's guidance, I used what I had on hand, but in the process, I forgot to think if I was solving a real problem or merely manufacturing a problem for me to solve. Truth is, I did both. I was so eager to use up all of the disks that I created a single node for each one of the disks in the new disk group, which is almost exactly what you're supposed to do. But it's only the right thing to do had all the nodes been out of space to expand into, so instead, I should have installed a single or perhaps just a small handful of disks and expanding with additional nodes and disks when the first initial pool was filled. I had a lot of fun, which was important, but fun should rarely be an excuse to stop thinking altogether. If I were to do this again, I would have installed only the two 3TB disks and that would have given me all the time in the world to wait until my new disk arrived. Because, as many of you pointed out, this experiment did not make sense from a money or an electricity standpoint. Oh well, lesson learned. I also made myself one of the dreaded shorts videos. It's not a format I particularly enjoy, but I can't justify spending more than a minute swapping a single disk. In that process though, I freed up a 10 terabyte disk, so what let's go ahead guy? and decommission all of the old disks here for good. Getting to the meat of this video, as you might remember, there's an empty caddy in the expansion bay that needs to be retrieved. The new old 10 terabyte disk is still hiding behind my computer machine and can be put into the expansion box right away. After verifying that the disk indeed shows up, let's go ahead and create a storage pool, a volume on that, and create a shared folder so that there is a destination for the data of each of the stored J nodes created in the last videos. I'm issuing the docker compose down command to each of the nodes to ensure that they don't write to disk while being copied. This issue could be partially solved by using rsync, robocopy or any of the other clever copy tools for that matter, but since the nodes are so small and relatively new, I don't have any issue powering them down while copying. In a quest for simplicity over efficiency, I'm also just using the GUI to initiate the copies. Yeah, sure, it could be done faster, but I don't care about machine time for non-time sensitive tasks. After all the nodes have been moved to their new destination, I'll go ahead and issue the matching docker compose up command. I'm using the dash detached flag because I know that the nodes are working. I'll then run my get storage a stats script a last time and check the status of the nodes. And they're all failing. The visually astute of you, and of course those that know a lot of Linux, have of course already figured out what's wrong here. I did not take ownership of the newly created share. I'll do that and rerun my tests. Now that everything seems to be working again, I'll rerun the get store j stats program. And as you can see, all of the nine nodes are at 25 gigabytes, with sums up to 225 gigabytes right now. If you multiply 225 gigabyte with one and a half dollar per month per terabyte, you get 33 cents per month. <laughs> it's not great yet, but once again, when this project has been going on for a month, I'll check back with you and see if we can hit my projected four dollars per month. At this point, the only thing left to do is to dismantle the old volumes, tear down the storage pools, and then take the disks out of the production from the actual disk shelf. It looks like this. At this point, all of the existing data has been moved to the new old disks, and all of the old disks can be taken out of production for good. At least for me, I've got a few plans with them for the future. Taking almost an entire disk shelf out of production like this does also have its negatives. Well, it has one negative. There's less blinking lights to look at. Which, considering the amount of money that I pay for power here in communist Europe, 
is probably a good thing after all. Once again, thank you so much for watching my video. I know this was kind of short and kind of pointless. I just wanted to admit that I made an error. Either way, I look forward to seeing you in the future. Have a good one.